bunnies. I'm here in Runyon Canyon Park in the world famous city of Hollywood, California, and I'm going to do your reading. This reading is How Have They Been Doing Since You Guys Left the Connection? All right, there's going to be three piles to choose from. Let's get cracking. Okay, pile number one. First card. The Three of Swords. Okay, well that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, pile number one, your person is feeling heartbroken. Now, there's three swords going through this heart, so there's probably a third-party situation going on, which is more common than not. Next card. Temperance. Okay. Your person is desires balance or desires what I'm being intuitively guided to explain is that your person desires um, coming into balance with you again. Yeah. Okay. Next card. Okay, the foundation is four of pentacles. All right? Your person's um, your person has been holding back this whole time, probably even while you guys were in contact. I'm definitely sensing there's no contact here, or you wouldn't be watching this reading. Next card. What's crowning? The star. Wow. Okay, your person still wishes about you guys getting back together or about forming a connection with you. So your person's still kind of like wishing on a star. This is also the card of Aquarius. Perhaps your person is an Aquarian, or perhaps you are, or have those heavy placements in your guys' chart, one or the other. What's passing? Ace of Cups. Okay. The feelings, I think maybe you guys have not been in contact for quite a while now, have not been in any sort of substantial contact. What, what, what the feelings are, what I'm being intuitively guided to explain is the feelings are starting to dwindle, that the hope is starting to fade. Because that's this is what's passing. Whereas the cup was once full, there was a lot, the feelings were very, um, th there was a lot of feelings, there was a lot of deep feelings of this connection. The feelings are starting to fade, I think. What's coming? High Priestess. See, this is another card of silence. You guys are psychically connected. Your person feels psychically connected with you, but no one's saying anything. Neither you nor them. It's This is all behind the curtain. This is all happening in the 5D. This is all happening on the spiritual level. Okay, the card represents them. The Five of Cups. See, what did I say about this The passing Ace of Cups? The cups feel spilt. The, um, the hope is fading, basically. Um, environment. Five of Wands. Competition. See what I said? There's a, thir there's a third party. There's someone else. Your person is dealing with someone else. Perhaps you are too. Um, and there's a there's conflict. of, And the conflict is that you guys still feel this deep connection with each other. Um, either you or them or with someone else or probably both of you might be dating other people. But the thing is, it doesn't it, it doesn't compare. It's the deep feelings, the depth of feeling, the, the spiritual, the energetic connection, that unexplainable, just magic connection that just can't be replaced. Right? I mean, more often than not, people end up in a very you know, commonplace, just a convenient relationship, you know, one that's much more easier to deal with, someone that just kind of fits right in, you know, and these kind of deep relationships usually are pretty complicated because there's such a deep connection and um, they require a lot more depth and there's a lot of intellect and there's a lot of emotional intelligence that, that gets triggered and, um, it changes you. This the kind of connection that you guys have is a kind of relationship that will change a person. And um, when you're just in a regular relationship with someone that you just kind of just get along with on all you know 
convenient relationship, a day-to-day kind of relationship. Yeah, it may be it may be convenient and it may be there, it may be like comforting, but it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you, right? You you're you're not growing in that kind of relationship. And that's probably what the conflict is with your person. Your person keeps on referencing back to you energetically, probably tries to keep it out of his or her mind, but the bond is too strong. And you know, it's like yeah, you could be in a relationship and be somewhat satisfied, but it the difference is it's like um what's a good analogy? It's like shopping at Target versus sh- shopping at Tiffany's. <laughs> okay? Like, you know, um it takes more work to get to be able to acquire the kind of finances to be able to shop at someplace like Tiffany's, right? <laughs> but once you do, it's way worth it, right? That's what I know that's kind of a vapid analogy, but you get what I'm saying, right? That's the difference between a kind of, the kind of relationship you guys would have if you guys had came into union versus the kind of relationship that you probably just have, you know, with just, like I said, I like to call them a convenient relationship. Okay, hopes and fears. Nine of pentacles. Okay, your person is putting a lot of his or her focus on um, their uh, ambitions, on their career pursuits, their goals, finances, their tr- your person is trying to distract him or herself with that outcome. Ace of Pentacles. Wow. Well, this means that your person wants a new beginning. I'm sensing both of you do. You probably don't. You probably don't admit it to yourselves. Even you probably like when the person comes up in your mind. You probably just kind of try to block them out of your mind. But the feeling is still there, right? It's like just nudging you. It's this high priestess energy. That, that psychic energy. That psychic connection. Uh, you try to silence it, but it doesn't stop, does it? You guys both are desiring a new start, and not just emotionally or just energetically, but physically in the 3D, in the physical realm. And Ace of Pentacles would augur that something like that can come to pass. It, c- it could happen, you know? It's possible. Right? Now, um, let's let's expound on this. Sorry about that. Let's expound on this. Okay. Okay, the judgment card. The judgment card. See, uh, there. It's reiterating what I was saying about wanting to, wanting to. Um, have a new start, a new beginning, wanting to resurrect this, because the judgment card is the card of resurrection. It's the Archangel Gabriel blowing the seventh trump, uh, calling upon the resurrection. So it kind of confirms what I was explaining, that um, both of you, your spirits, your souls, want to resurrect this, want, want to make this happen. Will you guys do it? Let's see. Oh, all right. That's a lot of cards. Um, four cards. I'm going to take them. Four cards, you guys. Let's see. Two of swords. Ah, eight of cups. Three of cups reverse and the moon, the moon card. Okay. Yeah, moon is hidden. Something's hidden. Card of cancer. Yeah, this is all hidden. And like I said, this is the card of cancer. Perhaps one of you have cancerian placements or perhaps are cancer. Um, And then the three cups reverse would mean there's no connection. Um, Probably you guys probably were once friends or part of the same social group, but there's no contact, there's no connection here. That's why it's reversed. And the Eight of Cups, it would be um, reconfirming what I was explaining earlier with the passing eight, Ace of Cups and the Five of Cups. It's like, you know, this person's turning away from these empty cups. Um, hope, you guys are losing hope. And here's the Two Swords. Both of you are are blinding yourselves. You guys try to keep, you, you guys try to block the thought of each other out of one another's mind. You and, and your person are both in denial of these deep feelings 
Why? Because it hurts. Because there's such a deep connection with you guys, and you guys are probably in a different in, in a different relationships now. And but you guys, like I said, it's shopping at Target versus shopping at Tiffany's. <laughs> okay, it's, it's you guys know your soul knows that you guys would be would evolve so much. Uh, just each of you personally because of your guys' connection, just because it's kind of sort of divinely ordained kind of connection. It's got that kind of magic, that multidimensional magic to it versus just, uh, like I said, a commonplace relationship, a 3D relationship on the earth plane. Your guys is a super cosmic t- kind of connection. And um, and you both are hurt, you, guys, you, you both are hurting. And you guys are in denial, denial of this. Okay. What's the advice? Two cards want to come out. Okay. Here's the advice, you guys. And the two cards came out as a seven of wands and the wheel of fortune. Here it is. The seven of wands is this guy. Look at him. He's fighting off these these staves, these wands, staving off these, these staves, these wands, these rods. It's, but um, he's holding his own. He's fighting for whatever it is that he believes in. He's fighting for it. And there's the Wheel of Fortune. So what's being told, what the advice is, you guys are being advised to fight for this connection. Because if you do fight for it and get through this, whatever this is, you guys disconnection or your guys fear of of a deep relationship like this it's a deep connection it's scary right it's it triggers you it's, this kind of connection forces you to brings out all your insecurities it brings all this stuff out because you you both are meant to evolve each other you your presence because how, how you guys are wired up together is enforcing each of you to grow into your higher selves you know, it's a spiritual connection. That's why that's why it's scary. But you're being advised to fight for this connection because if you do, guess what? The wheel of fortune. That means all your accomplishments, not just within the relationship, but beyond that. Because these kind of sort of divine unions are beyond just about you two. It's 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 bigger than just, just you two. It's about um the world stage and it's about being called to to accomplish and do work certain light work in the world together whether it's through the arts or through entrepreneurship or through um spiritual community whatever field it may be you guys are these kind of unions are called to help the world evolve to help in the global waking up process you know to help in the aquarian age and that's what's going to happen if you guys that's the advice because if you guys do fight for this, the wheel of fortune is going to turn on both it, in your favor, not just in yours, but in your partners too. All right. Okay, pile number one. Sorry about that. I forgot to pull you guys a Rumi Oracle um, card. It's Rumi, the the famous um, historic um, Persian poet who changed the world. Um, sort of a prophet, right? Let's do it, okay? Let's get you, pull you guys an oracle card. See what this oracle has to say for you guys. Okay. Okay. This is the card that came out, you guys. I'm just going to take the top one because, like, a bunch of them came out, but we're going to keep it one oracle card. And this is the, the all encompassing hand. Wow. Very intriguing image. Um, it's kind of a. I'm somewhat abstract, but I'm seeing sort of a, a divine mother, divine mother kind of energy kind of figure here. Do you guys see it? And it's the all encompassing hand. Let's read it, okay? Let's just read it. Number 20, all encompassing hand. 
this is a new oracle that I got so um, here it is all encompassing hand okay you are the essence of my existence who am I a mirror in your hand see what's happening you guys you two mirror each other and that's why it's so triggering and that's why it's so scary okay whatever you do I will do what was I saying earlier about your guys connection you guys can't get each other you guys feel this connection you guys feel connected you guys cannot get each other out of your guys mind um, whatever you do I will do I'm your irresistible reflection you guys okay this is you can't make this shit up all right with every breath I feel my heart is beating with yours in your joy I am exuberant in your sadness I'm in sorrow if you are bitter I become bitter if you are grace I become grace my joy is when I am bewildered in your beauty and taste the sweetness of love on your lips if I pick a rose without if I pick a rose without you it becomes a thorn in my hand if I am the thorn I become the rose in your hand Rumi wow you guys that's that's just I mean Rumi Rumi is the master okay just the master of, of romantic poetry right I mean this whole thing is just was this card was so divinely guided for you guys it explains perfectly what I was saying this connection you guys feel what a beautiful connection what a beautiful um, poem right all right poem number one there it is Mwah. pile number two let's get on with it okay first card is the six of rods or the six of wands this is the card of victory this could be the card of marriage um pile number two your person wants to come in victorious wants to wants to save this connection or pursue this connection make it happen what's crossing the lovers, wow, okay, deep union, deep soulmate connection, right? That's what's crossing. Um, foundation, the three of cups. Perhaps you guys um, were friends first. It's a friendship that is. There's deeper feelings involved. What's crowning? The ace of swords. Okay, what I'm intuitively, intuitively being guided to explain right now it just flashed right through me this is a friendship and um, the your guys real feelings for each other you guys have not admitted it yet that's why the ace of swords is your crowning the ace of swords is the card of truth and um, it's the sword of truth right and that's the highest ideal here your person is very um, optimistic about this connection and your person is very much in love you guys are friends have been friends it's a friendship and your person wants to come out wants to admit his or her feelings what's passing the star uh, wow this came out in pond number one too this is the Aquarian card perhaps you're an Aquarius or perhaps your person is or have those placements in um, your charts but it's passing this is the wish come coming true card and I think what this is saying here, since it's in the passing position, is um, your person believes that you are, you are the one, you are the wish come true, right? What's coming? The Knight of Cups, okay, there it is. This is the Knight of Cups, the Knight that wants to dash in and offer his cup, offer his love, um, and begin to court you in that way. What card represents Ace of Pentacles, okay? This came out in pile number one, too. You know what's so weird, you guys? I kid you not, and I think you can ask any reader out there. It's unbelievable how you shuffle, and the same cards keep on coming out. And it's, I don't know, it's just, um, it's weird how that happens. Like, you shuffle extra hard because you don't want to get the same cards, but it just, it ends up happening. All right. Ace of Pentacles. That means your person really wants this to be a very grounded, wants to really, is very serious about this. 
Ace of Pentacles is a new beginning. It's in the 3D. It's it's the the suit of Earth. So it's a very grounded approach. Your person is very serious about this. Your person is very serious about your guys' connection. Um, environment. Ten of wands. Ten of rods. Ten of wands. Okay, this is burden. There are burdens right now in in his or her environment that they're dealing with. Um, there are things that are holding him or her back. You know, they're burdening them. But, I, I mean... With all the the rest of these cards, I think your person still wants to just dash in, in spite of that. Hopes and fears, King of Rods. Yes, um, the King of Rods, the King of Wands, could be a your person could be a fire sign, could be an Aries or a, a Leo or Sagittarius. The King, this King is the King that charges right in. You know, does does not. Um, I just does it doesn't doesn't even think twice. That's what your person wants to do. That's why. It's, Still, same suit, see? The wands, king of wands. That's the hope. That's what your person wants to do. Outcome. Wow. You got, Okay. <laughs> this card came out in pile number one, too, you guys. <laughs> what was I talking about earlier, where you try to shuffle and, you, and the same cards keep on popping up? Um, Wheel of Fortune. This is what, what, what the outcome is. This is going to... You guys are probably going to come into union. Um, now this reading is about, I mean, the theme is that who, um, how have they been since you have just, since you have, um, let go of this connection. So what I'm sensing here with, with, with this reading with you guys is this was a friendship, a friendship that has not been as that in which the romantic feelings have not been, have not been brought to the surface yet. And perhaps you guys just are in the friend zone. It's a friend zone kind of thing. And you guys just kind of just figured it'll just stay there. And, but now, so you guys kind of left the, within each of yourselves, left the, just let go of the idea of that and just kept it in the friend zone, right? But your person, how, how he or she feels since you guys have left the connection energetically, this is how they, how they feel. They want to come in. They, 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 they're in love, and they want, they want to bring it out. Ace of Swords. They want to bring out the truth. They want to come, come clean and admit their feelings. And I think that's what your person is planning on doing. Let's expound on this, okay? Let's clarify the outcome. Wheel of Fortune. All right. We got the Ace of Cups reversed. Okay. See. Okay. What's being said here is this, the Ace of Cups upright would be, you know, the fulfillment, emotional fulfillment, emotional accomplishment. But reversed, it's going to be, um, it's going to augur that um, that's how you guys have felt, right? Um, you guys kind of just let go of the idea, right? Um, and that's what's being clarified here. But, since it's clarifying the Wheel of Fortune... That's going to change, right? That's going to change. Let's get another card. Okay. Yeah, see? This is um, reconfirming that notion again. Four of Cups. The card of complacency. The card of just kind of letting go, which is what you guys did. But look at the next card. Eight of Wands. Eight of Rods. That means charging in. Full force. Very sexual card. Phallic. Just charging in quickly. So... That's going to be the outcome, it looks like. What's the advice? Okay. The advice is a hangman. Okay, what this is being told is for you to get out of this position, kind of just hanging there, just kind of, you guys just left this kind of, this connection hanging. Um, the advice is to get down off that position. Just don't just leave it hanging and to um, start talking, you know, um, open up. Um, you know, don't be afraid. You know, this is a friendship that can go to the next level, you know, be open to it. Like I said, 
get out of this position just hang in there waiting and take some action all right now let's get a roomy card a roomy oracle card it's an oracle of the um historic famous persian prophet and poet roomy um pull one for you guys Okay, here it is. The victory of Miriam. Wow, that's my mother's name. Um, the victory of Miriam. It's a divine mother kind of, like the, the it's the Miriam's the the mother Mary energy. Let's read it, okay? Let's read it. What I'm already intuitively um, receiving. Victory of Miriam, it's victory. And look at what the theme of this whole reading is. It started out with the victory card, the six of the six of wands. So it's um it perfectly aligns with this reading. The victory of Miriam, it's gonna be the victory of the divine mother or divine feminine energy in this connection. Um hold on, sorry you guys. Got distracted a little bit. That's card number forty one. It's a, a new oracle deck that I got, so I'm not totally familiar with it yet. So um, we're going to read it, okay? I read the card for pile number one, and it was absolutely just, it was fantastic. It was gorgeous. Here it is. Victory of Miriam. Okay. If you are longing to caress the moon, don't turn away from it. Okay, that correlates with you guys are longing. You guys are in a friendship mode and friend zone mode, but you guys are longing to caress the moon and it's, don't turn away from it. If you are not ill, why do you crawl under a blanket to hide? Why are you guys hiding your guys' feelings from each other when you guys feel this, right? You are in a core, core query of sweets. Why do you look so sour? Sorry about that, pile number two. Um, I got cut off for a second. The camera stopped. So um, we left off at why do you look so sour? Where is that? Um, why do you look so sour? You live in the spring of life. Why are you withered inside? Don't fight against yourself. Don't flee from what could be your glory. Like a fearless, like a fearless moth, dive into the flame. Why be linked to your obsessions? Burn out in the flames until your heart and soul are enlightened. Get out of the old carcass and form your, form yourself a new body. Resurrect this connection, these deeper feelings that you too have probably forgotten about or just, you know, have suppressed and just kept yourselves in the friend zone. Why are you afraid of a fox when you descend from lions? Why be a lame ass when you have the strength of stallions? The beloved you seek will arrive to open the door to your fortune. For love is the key that opens all your locks. Rumi. Wow. You see how perfectly this oracle card aligned with this whole reading? Um, it's obviously, it's talking about um, someone who's afraid of love. Someone who's afraid of taking that next step. Um, and he's saying, you know... Once you guys kind of just come clean and arrive to this connection and um, open up and be honest with each other about your feelings. I know it's hard. I mean, it's so it's so embarrassing uh, to when you feel, you know, something for someone to have to admit it. It's, embar it's scary. It's embarrassing. Right. But um, I'm since you guys are friends here, you know, and yeah, that could be embarrassing. But your person definitely has the same feelings and wants to come come clean and wants to admit his or her true feelings for you, okay? All right, pile number two. That was your reading. Mwah. Pile number three. How are they doing since you left this connection? Okay, let's get on with it. First card. The Ten of Pentacles. Okay, so... Your person is in another relationship, pile number three. What's crossing? The tower. Oh, 
Okay. That relationship is coming to an end, it looks like, pile number three. What's foundation? Ace of Swords. Truth is about to be revealed. What's crowning? Justice. Okay, this is your person's karma. I'm being intu intuitively guided to say that this didn't end well. Um, this person more, more than likely ghosted you and uh, didn't give you closure is what I'm being guided to say. What's passing? The chariot, the Cancerian card, the card of cancer. Perhaps your person um, is a cancer or has those placements in his or her chart. Perhaps you're a cancer or have those placements or perhaps a person that, um, that your person left you for is a cancer. Let's see. What's coming in your future? Nine of Cups. Okay, your person is wanting to be single. Okay, this is what's going on in number three. See, your person left you and is in another relationship. And this relationship is coming to a close because the tower is crossing it. So this relationship is about to end. The foundation is this, uh, a sword, sword of truth. There's a truth that's going to be revealed, and I'm in being intuitively guided to say it's to do with you, pile number three. Your person is coming to the realization that the grass wasn't greener. Okay? And this is karmic justice that's happening to your person for what he, she did to you. The chariot is what's passing. So the the movement or the momentum in that relationship or perhaps there's can cancer energy involved that's passing and nine of cups is the quintessential card of um successful single life a happy single life a happy bachelor's life or bachelor bachelorette's life okay so that's what's coming your person's gonna looking to i'm being intuitively guided to say that your person's looking to be happily single again okay what represents your person six of pentacles okay see so your person is seeking financial balance um with six of pentacles and your person's probably going to be in a much more more of a generous sort of energy be more open um perhaps i'm sensing even make contact with you okay environment his or her three of cups okay yeah the environment your person is go, is about to go into an environment more socializing probably you know, you know being out on the town i know things are limited due to the pandemic but um your person is going to be more social and more open to probably dating and stuff like that um hopes and fears judgment okay you know, this card I keep on saying this but it keeps on happening you guys I kid you not the same card I think uh, like th two or three of these cards yeah four of them came out in the in, in the other reading too and I think in the one before it um, it's just uncanny how the same cards keep on coming out and I shuffle them and and this happens to a lot of readers so it's really interesting anyhow um, point made um, so judgment hopes and fears your person is in fear of judgment coming to him or her your person knows that whatever happened this relationship they're in and it's coming to uh, what I'm sensing is not a good ending it's a tower ending so it's it's coming to a bad it's gonna if it hasn't yet it's about to come to a really bad ending and that's what your person's in fear of. It's the judgment. Your person knows karma is coming to get his ass, or his or her ass, okay? Um, and that's what your person is in fear of. What's the outcome here? Seven of Cups. Okay, this is the... This could be illusions, but this is also dreams, um, options. So what's coming is your person is going to be single, is going to be... Um, 
exploring the single life again and um, looking into his options career goals um, he's just gonna you know just probably take a, a moment to enjoy the buffet of single life um, let's expound on that ten of cups oh wow your person's okay pile number three this is what I'm intuitively being guided to say this is what your person wants your person wants to reconcile with you this is the outcome your person wants okay um, let's expand on this some more um, what actions what actions are, are, is your person going to take what actions is he she going to take here Okay, that was a whole bunch that fell out. Um, solid. Wow, this is like, you guys, hold on, one, two, three, four. this is like five cards flew out. Okay, I'm just going to take them because they look, I just glanced at them and they look substantial. Okay, here it goes. Seven of Rods, reverse. Your person wants to come out of conflict. See, Seven of Rods is being conflict having to stave off these rods or these wands, but it's reversed. So your person wants to come out of this conflict with you, this separation with you, you know, whatever is the defensive energy between the two of you. I don't know, however it ended between you two. And your person, next is the six of wands. Wow. Your person, see, your person wants to come in, pile number two, I mean, pile number three, my apologies. Um, victorious six of wands six of rods is the victory card you know this this card came out in the other readings too <laughs> I kid you not it's like the same cards came coming out it's kind of driving me nuts but oh well it is what it is okay so and the next card is three of pentacles see the third party thing your person wants to work on this with you I'm sensing what I'm being guided to say intuitively and instinctively is your person wants to start built rebuilding with you building this connection back with you but he's coming out of this third party okay and then oh see two of cups what did I say your person wants to rebuild this with you your person wants to reconnect with you and I'm um, having you start two of cups there it is the soulmate card okay and then the next one is the five of cups reversed see it's not, this is not by accident you guys check this out the two conflicting cards were reversed. Your person totally, clearly wants to come out of conflict with you. That's why the Five of Cups are reversed. This is a cup of total, like, you know, dis disappointment, sorrow, abandonment, um, being ghosted, you know, just mulling over what was. But it's reversed. So your person wants to, your person wants to come out of that. Okay, what's the advice? Let's get some advice here. King of Cups. Okay, here's the advice. Your person is going to come in as a new version of him or herself. A much more masculine version, but a much much more balanced masculine version of him or herself. Your person has evolved, pile number three. This, what your guy's connection and what your person has been through with this other situationship or relationship that he, she has been in is going to force, and I'm sensing it's mostly your guys' connection, is, is forced him or her to, um, to into self-analysis, into what, what has forced them to get in touch with their true feelings, okay? And your person is evolving into a king of cups. See, this is a king who's very in touch with his emotions, balanced with, the, with both the feminine and negative energies. And offering his cup as a king your person is grown he's he ha, he she has um, emotionally and spiritually grown yeah so yeah your person has emotionally grown and is going to be coming back in a much more refined way okay let's get a roomy Oracle card 
sum it all up, all right? And this is an oracle card of Rumi, the um, the historic, world famous Persian prophet and poet. Prof- some of the most profound poems ever written in history. All right, let's do this. Oh. All right, two cards came out, and I'm being intuitively intuitively guided to take them both. Um, it's supposed to only be one card, but here we go. First card is the Hand of Fatima. See that? See here, I see like the Divine Mother here, and the little child, little girl, reaching out her hand, her her spirit, reaching out for the Divine Mother. Let's read it, okay? It's a new oracle, so I don't have these memorized yet, you guys. And Fatima 43, okay. Here we go. The Hand of Fatima. Okay. I can never leave you, not for a moment, not for an hour. You are in everything I do. You are my everything. My drink is your sweetness. I move to your command. I am a surrendered prey in your hands, and you are my consuming lion. Your soul and my soul are truly one soul. I swear to our one soul, I long for no one but you. In the garden of your grace, I am only a germinating sprout. The crown of my blooming is is the desire to be in your arms, Rumi. Wow, okay. So what this is saying, pile number three, is Clearly, um, your person, your guys' connection is too strong. And what what particularly stood out to me is this line, in the garden of your grace, I'm only a germinating sprout. Because I was having a, a vision of a garden earlier before I did your reading while I was meditating. So um, there's, something, there's something very significant in that. And um, your person, your guys' connection... Even though you guys have been apart this whole time, and he or she has been in another relationship, and you, perhaps you have too, even though I'm sensing, Paul number three, that you haven't, that you've been doing your work, you've been doing yourself, your shadow work. That's what I'm sensing. Um, and even though you guys have been separated, there's, there's been progress, been, there's been progress, unseen progress, um, in the upper in the upper spheres, in the higher levels. So you guys have been making progress, nevertheless. So, um, yes, that's what it is. So, in a strange way, even though you guys have been apart, your guys' connection has been deepening due to your guys' separateness and due to probably your person being in this other situation, this other relationship. The, it's, it's clarified just how deeply connected you guys are. So what's happened here, okay? Now the second card is the, oh wow, you guys check this out. What was I saying about the two lines the, um, that really stood out to me about the garden? This card is enter the garden of delights, okay? Enter the garden of delights. Not by accident. Let's look it up, all right? 28. All right, here we go. Enter the Garden of Delights. Are you aware that sweetness is found everywhere in town? Are you aware that winter is gone and spring has come around? Are you aware that sweet basil and the carnation are whispering in the garden and laughing about 
how simply everything is found. Are you aware the nightingale has come back from its flight, singing out messages of love to spread delight with every sound? Everything in the garden is granted the right from the divine court to appear for our delight. Everything is here to make the earth green and alive as a haven for our life. What remains buried in the soil will always endeavor to reach out. No one truly alive can ever be pawned to a prison or a tomb. Rumi. Wow. That's an interesting line, that ending line. No one truly alive can ever be pawned to a prison or a tomb. That's profound right there. Wow. Just ruminate on that one line. No one truly alive can ever be pawned to a prison or a tomb. You know, like when I'm thinking of the word pawn, I'm thinking of the word of a pawn shop, <laughs> at least in our modern age. Um, and, you know, you, you, to trade something in for something else, for the meantime, with, with, the, um, with the intention of going back to get it, <laughs> whatever, you know, um, or for money. But here, to be pawned to a prisoner or tomb means, okay, I guess this is what's, ha- what's happening here. Your person's going to be exploring the single life for a while, okay? And probably seeing what's out there is what I'm sensing. And I, I'm sensing what's, what's being told here is you're going to be doing that too. But you guys are going to come back a more evolved version of yourself. So that's what the Garden of Delights is. The Garden of Delights is just enjoying the buffet of life of the single life, you know, without having to worry about, or, you know, complications of a connection. That way, when you guys do come, your paths cross again, and you guys decide to reconnect, you guys are going to be in a much more evolved, sort of, very self-actualized version of yourselves. So where it's going to be two power, powerhouses coming together versus to, you know, kind of looking for validation. You guys are going to be so self-actualized. You guys aren't going to have no need for one another, for anyone. But you guys are going to want one another. Do you see what I'm saying? Big difference. Um, and be probably very open to, to each other's freedom. That's what's going on here, pile number three. And I think that's probably one of the best outcomes you could get, Right. All right, poll number three. That was your reading. Mwah.